today about the well building standard, actually. Yeah. So, uh, how many of you in the room have heard about the well building standard before? Val and. Yeah, I know. You came with me. <laughs> and are there any professionals in the room that have anything to do with real estate? No. So, this is a completely new audience for me. Um, I'm usually speaking to uh, design and real estate and construction professionals um, at other industry events, so I'm really excited to be here talking to um, a bit of a different audience, uh, and I hope you're interested in uh, what I'm going to talk about today. The well building standard um, is really cool. So it's a new building certification system which is focused on occupant health and well-being. So if you have heard ever before of LEED, um, that is focused on sustainability and environmental properties of buildings and building performance. And WELL is focused on occupant health and well-being and the, um, the employee experience or the experience of the folks that are actually inside of those buildings. So what's great about this um, and my background being design is that this really gives um, design and construction and real estate professionals a way to act as agents of public health. Um, and create spaces that foster a better environment for our people um, occupying those spaces and their personal health and well-being. Um, the other great thing about WELL is that it actually provides a way to verify that we've met the measures and features of the standard by uh, coming back to the space after you've finished and testing to ensure that you've met the requirements which is a bit unique from some of the other building standards out there today. So the standard has seven different areas of focus. They are uh, mind, light, nourishment, air, comfort, fitness, and water. Um, they are sort of dependent on uh, three different areas of behavior, operations, and design. So first we have to design it, and then we have to maintain it, and then we have to um, live in it. So uh, that really involves several different parties, uh, starting with real estate and the folks who build out the space and maintain it. Um, and then, of course, the support of HR, uh, who kind of introduces these features to the employees and helps run the programs to support. And then the, the employees who actually live in the space and take it on themselves to maintain uh, the wellness properties and integrate them into their daily work life. Okay, so why pursue well certification? Um, so research shows that by taking the measures that we can with uh, the design of the space, we can actually support uh, the health and well-being and the productivity of those folks that are living in it day to day. Um, so there's some interesting statistics around the benefits of healthy buildings um, as identified by building owners. And I think what's interesting about some of these stats here is that there's actually an unknown component to that as well. So, for instance, the first 47% um, reporting a 1% to 5% reduction in healthcare costs. There's actually a 52% um, component of that where we have an unknown of, um, of the actual reduction in healthcare costs. So, by studying the measures that we put in place, we can better understand uh, what, the, what the actual results are. Um, and same thing for the 21% that report improved productivity. There's actually 52% who actually are completely unaware of the improvement in productivity. Um, in terms of cost, so in the real estate world, we're usually looking at the cost of the fit out of the space and the cost of maintaining that. And we know that 90% of an organization's cost is typically related to staff. So by making just a nominal improvement in productivity, we can actually make a much more significant um, impact in terms of cost benefit um, adversely uh, compared to a nominal improvement in um, real estate cost or maintenance of real estate, and that would be just a small improvement in cost benefit. So why did we pursue well certification? Um, some, actually, some exciting news. TD is the first well-certified project under the first version of the well building standard. Um, that was actually announced earlier this week, so I'm excited to, uh, to say that today. So um, as part of our, our four main pillars, we um, commit to building an extraordinary workplace for our employees. So by building out our, our workplace with the well building standard in mind, um, we 
very much support that commitment to build the extraordinary workplace. And that's in combination with our commitment to build sustainable spaces as well. So by putting the plaque on the wall um, to show that we received well certification, we also show that the organization has a vested interest in the health and well-being of each employee and kind of gives them that personal sense of connection. Um, we're also hoping that we'll see the potential um, for improved uh, healthcare, uh, reduction in healthcare costs and improved productivity over time. And then bottom line, this is just the right thing to do. I don't think anyone could argue that um, integrating health and wellness into the workplace is um, something that could be argued against. Uh, so why was TD23 the right pilot project uh, for us? So we built out uh, 40 other floors within the TD Center. This is in downtown Toronto, um, where we went through and we optimized that space to a new corporate design standard. So we went from legacy space um, that was unattractive, high-walled panels, really a lack of collaborative and private space for employees to a new, more open and collaborative environment um, for them with a variety of work settings to escape to throughout the day. Um, so when we did this project with the Well Building Standard Integrated, we had a great set of previous projects to compare to um, with regards to cost and employee feedback um, and some, some other important information for us to look at as we go through the, the ongoing research and study of the project. It's about a 25,000 square foot floor plate for 170 employees. Um, the client that we worked with for this project is actually our internal audit group. Um, so they occupy two floors. One floor is the well floor and the other is just a newly renovated uh, TV space. So that'll also be important as we go through the activity of studying how the employees are performing in the well space versus our typical corporate standard. So these are just some of the features that were incorporated as part of the project. Um, there's more than 60 well features on the floor, and I'm going to go through some examples of some of them, um, starting with uh, light and air. So uh, two of the main uh, features that were incorporated were uh, lighting to help support the body's natural circadian rhythm. So what that means is actually not light changing over um, the period of the day, but the in ambient lighting being able to sustain a certain level of light um, to support the body's natural need for uh, daylight throughout the day. Um, air, we actually worked with the landlord to enhance the base building mechanical system and add additional air filtration to filter out some of the contaminants that we found when we did our um, pre-testing on one of the other floors in the same building. So by incorporating enhanced air filtration for our floor, we also impacted the floors, um, other floors throughout the building, including some of our own space and other tenants. In terms of comfort, uh, we incorporated sit-stand desks throughout uh, the floor. There's actually a requirement that you have 30% uh, of your workstations as an adjust adjustable height work surface. Um, so that is something that we did. Um, that's something that we're receiving very positive feedback, um, feedback for, and I think that um, the earlier discussion uh, mentioned that was successful for them as well. Um, this is something that we've rolled into the standards going forward, and we're doing them uh, across the board. Uh, mind, uh, this is something a little unique um, compared to our other space in the building. Uh, we actually have a room which we're calling the Tranquility Lounge, which allows employees to occupy that room for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, we actually worked with the business occupying the floor to develop a policy around how this room is used, who can use it, and when, and when they're using it, and we're monitoring it through uh, card swipe activity. Uh, and the idea is that you go in there and you're not taking your laptop with you to take a conference call. We have other space to do that. This is really for you to come and relax and maybe even take a short nap um, and just enjoy some of the elements in the room. We have uh, a lot of biophilia throughout the floor, um, incorporating artwork through our art program, which is evocative of nature. Um, that was something that was very important to the project. Uh, water and nourishment. So in our cafe space, we did add additional seating. It's very important for employees to have a place to escape, um, get away from their desk, and eat with others. Um, it promotes healthier eating habits. Uh, nourishment, we actually worked with our um, 
vending provider. We don't provide a, um, a full service cafeteria on the floor because we're in a, a high rise with a food court on the main floor with lots of options. But we do have vending. So as part of the requirements of the well building standard, we had to look at every single piece that went into that vending machine and make sure it met specific requirements on refined ingredients and sugars. Um, and there are some limits that are set for that. So uh, everything in the vending machine is healthy. Um, and yes, you can still have Coke, just in limited quantities. Um, and then in terms of water, so we, uh, as I said before, we did do some preliminary testing on another floor. So we were able to identify um, different levels of contaminants or um, sediment, which is known as turbidity, um, and whether or not there were any issues there. So the requirements of well actually go beyond the local requirements, the local code requirements for um, water quality. So we addressed those by adding um, enhanced uh, water filtration through a carbon filter. Um, and that's provided at the sink tap. So that also allowed us to eliminate, uh, there was some supplemental filtration units on the countertop we were able to eliminate there. And employees know that we're providing them um, healthy water from the tap, which encourages them to drink more of it throughout the day. In terms of uh, how we project with how we partnered with HR. So we did do a gap analysis at the beginning of the project to identify um, where we might have gaps in our policy that would help employees um, with the understanding that we're providing them with these tools and resources to support their own personal health and well-being. Um, we developed a guide for the space to outline all of the well features so that they're aware of what was uh, incorporated. Uh, and then we're also working with them in an ongoing case study of um, of how the space is impacting the employees. So in terms of uh, what's next, I, I know I have to wrap it up here. Um, we are uh, doing pre-occupancy and post-occupancy studies and interviews of our employees on the floor as well as um, maintenance and operations folks and HR to understand what's been successful with the project. Um, and of course, ongoing education and awareness. The employees have been involved um, with us throughout the course of the project from the very beginning. And they've really taken it upon themselves to embrace this culture of health and wellness. Um, so we want to make sure that carries through to anybody new that joins the group. And then um, we're executing additional well pilots, which I'm excited to say, um, not only in corporate space, but also in retail. So um, hopefully we'll have better, uh, more data to report on as we go through the, the ongoing study of these projects. So thank you very much.